Hello, everyone. Chime in, chime in, share, post, tag, invite someone. I do apologize for being a few minutes late. Tag, share, invite someone. I'm here uh, still at the library sitting in one of these wonderful chairs. I think I want one of these at home. Chat, share, tag, invite someone. Hello, Sister Latrice. I pray all is well with you there in Gary. Share, tag, invite someone. What in the world is going on? What in the world is going on? Please, tag, share, invite someone. Glory to God. I have a nice little view right here in the library. And I wanted to stay true to my word. Hello, word. Hello, Kimberly. Hello, Rosemary. What in the world is going on? Tag, share, invite someone. What is going on in our world, in humanity? What is going on? What is going on and what does God have to say about it? I'm going to, I've, I've done a teaching on this text before and I believe God is allowing me to go back to it for a reason and it is Psalms 52 so go ahead and turn there go ahead and turn there tag someone share this invite someone to be a part of hearing what the Spirit of the Lord has to say to us the church um, first of all uh, I'm going to share the dream that I had and then after that, I'm going to share what I believe um, the Lord is saying about what's going on in our government. Amen. Amen. So we're here at the library. I'm seated over here off to the side, just trying to get a quiet spot. So this is me, one of the crazy chairs. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, so let me back up a little bit. On Saturday, I had the opportunity to minister in Chicago at a relationship conference. And um, it was powerful. I went to go and talk about relationships. Uh, it was hosted by a good friend in ministry, Karen uh, Morton. Evangelist Karen Morton and uh, there was a couple there not married, uh, but there was a couple there that um, It was clear that deliverance was supposed to go forth and several of us began to pray for them and um, It was clear to me that the uh, gentleman was not my assignment uh, and so the two pastors took him off to the side and and uh, did and listened to him, uh, counseled him, I'm sure, in, in the way in which he should go. God allowed me and uh, another uh, sister minister to minister to the young lady. And uh, deliverance was there. It was nigh. Uh, the, uh, that which had attached itself to us, her in the spirit, uh, was, was there to be delivered, to be set free, to come out. Um, but one, I think some of it was fear of hers, um, uncomfortable. A lot of times when people are going through deliverance, being in an open setting like that with other people watching, uh, it, it, it can be embarrassing and the enemy will play. He'll play, uh, on your head and no matter how much you tell him to focus on you, that thing does not want to be released. It, it, the Bible says that when you set the house in order, you cast out a demon, that he will go, he will come and see if the house is still empty and he will go and find seven more 
and he will bring them back to move in and to occupy and you'll be worse off than you were before they left. What does that mean? That means that when you go through deliverance, when you have been set free from something, when you are on your way to being made whole in that thing that you have struggled with, it is important that you fill the house, this house, this, this body. It is important that you fill it with the word of God, with worship, with service, with the things of God so that he finds no room. He finds no room to come back and try to dwell in your space again and the Bible says you will be worse off now as I was headed home I said now Lord I you know you have given me a ministry of deliverance what is it that I was unable to not me I'm just saying he's given me a ministry of deliverance um, there was a time in our church, the Streams Church, that we were often taking people through deliverance. Um, but one thing was, was sure, that we would take them off to the side into private areas. So that's one thing about deliverance that you must um, be aware of. And you want to go in twos uh, with someone else who is skilled. Amen. But this is what the Lord said on my way back. And I'm going to touch on the dream. And then we're going to get to what in the world is going on. When the Lord said to me on my way back from Chicago, he said, some things only come out by prayer and fasting. And I was convicted. I was convicted because I knew that I had gotten away from what I know to do in ministry for a prayer, a prayed and fasted life, a prayed up and fasted life. I had gotten away from that. Yes, I fast. Yes, I pray. But not to the degree that I used to. When literally I would walk into a space and demons would tremble, not because of me, but because of the God in me. And so the Lord said, get back to it. OK, amen. Our church is on a fast. I'm back to it. Well, um, I was at an event. I was at a, a location uh, on Wednesday afternoon and a young lady walked in my path and it was clear that she needed prayer. She got out the car with a black eye and it was clear that she needed prayer. But because I was uh, with someone else ministering to them, standing alongside of them, doing a God thing, a God thing and a good thing. Um, I felt like, no, I can't leave them and go pray for her. I can't take my attention off of this and go over there and pray for her. And so um, she walked off and then shortly after that, she went in the building, she came back out. The people said, um, then she came out and she walked in another direction, not towards her car, but in another direction. And we asked the, then we were like, mm, okay. So again, you still didn't pray for her. You let her walk by. So then, um, I, I'm just being real with y'all. I'm, 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 I'm sharing my confession and then my testimony. And then we're going to talk about what in the world is going on. So then, um, we get to, we're standing there outside and these policemen start coming out of the building. We were at a courthouse in Greenfield and I was there standing in the gap alongside of someone else. And these policemen start coming out of the building. Did you see that lady? Yes, yeah, she went that away. And we're like, what? What's wrong? What's going on? They said, well, she had threatened to commit suicide. Now, when I first told this testimony on Wednesday at church, I was broken and, and I'm still the reality of it, um, that she, you let somebody walk past you because you were doing a God thing right here. But I told you to break, to stop that and deal with her, pray with her because you're not being obedient to me. You're not being sensitive to my voice and doing what I tell you to do consistently and all the time. Yeah, you do it. But right there, that's what I need you to do. I didn't know she was suicidal, but God knew. And so I did find out later that the young lady had gone to her lawyer's office, that that's where they found her. She was at the lawyer's office. So you have these two instances where God is speaking to you Tuesday, minister, elder, doctor, prophetess. And I'm telling you something is going on. That night I go to bed and fourth watch somewhere in that hour, I'm awakened. And in me being awakened, I'm awakened to a dream that I'm like, what is going on? And in this dream, there is a lady and where she's in this room and she's like in a refrigerator, right? But she appears to be dead. And then there's another room on the outside where there's a man sitting at 
a desk and he's just kind of sitting there and people are coming and going and when I shared this testimony at church I did not share the part about the pastor who was in the dream and it's a pastor that I know it's a pastor that is uh, not in a church right now I'm, I think his church may have transitioned him out or maybe he uh, made a choice to leave but this person this pastor was in the dream so it was the pastor it was the gentleman sitting at the desk it was me it was a lady in a refrigerator who to me seemed to be dead she was in a refrigerator and I was going about in the dream doing what I know to do doing God stuff doing good no doing God stuff and doing good stuff and that dream shook me and throughout the day, I kept saying, God, what are you saying in this dream? What are you saying in this dream? When I got to church during prayer that night, the Holy Spirit said, this is what that dream meant. You are so focused on what you're doing, even though it's the stuff I told you to do, that when I tell you to do something else, you're missing it. And then he went on to say, this is what the church is doing. The church is going about doing what they know to do. They come in the church, they prayerfully bring in their tithes, their offers, they're praising, they're singing songs, they're waving their hands, they're waving flags, they're doing all of these things, they're preaching and teaching. But there are people in the house that are dead. They are dead. But we're going about doing God stuff. And I said, Lord, who was that man that was sitting there? And I thought it was, I thought it was Jesus just kind of watching what we were doing. I brought, was brought, given another revelation last night uh, physically about who that man was. And he said, it's the pastors. It's the elders. It's the intercessors. It's the worshipers. It's the people in the church. It's all of you. You are walking right past people who are dead in their spirits. They are dead in their souls. And because they are there, because I remember the woman in the dream was real pretty. She was pretty in this refrigerator, but she looked dead. She was dressed nice. I remember thinking that, but I still was going by. And I was thinking in the dream, why are you in this room with this dead woman? And you're not, and people were coming in and out. They were coming through this front door where the man was sitting in the other room. Then they were coming into the room that I was in. And nobody was recognizing this woman. And it was kind of like she was concealed over at the end of the room. And so it was almost like something was covering her. And so you may not have quickly recognized that she was dead or that she was even there. But if you paid attention, if you looked around, if you were still and focused on what was going on around you, you would have saw her. But if no one else saw her, you saw her. And what God spoke to me and said, when you have an assignment, whether it's me individually or you who are under the sound of my voice, when God has given you an assignment to someone, whether it was that sister in Chicago, that woman when I was standing outside the courthouse, that woman in the dream, you better do what I tell you to do because people are dying in the church with all of our preaching and our singing and our supposedly prophesying some of you prophet lying you ain't prophesying some of our words of knowledge with all of that and he said if the worshipers if the worship leaders the singers the ministers the the elders the pastors the inners he said all of you need to have a prayer prayed and fasted life so you can be sensitive to what's going on around you. So your ears will be open, your eyes will be open, your heart, your spirit will be sensitive to the cries of people, the silent cries. Then I said, God, why was she on ice? Why, why was she in a refrigerator? Why was she in this chilled place? And the Lord said, because she wasn't dead. She was asleep. She wasn't dead. She was asleep. When I looked up what being on ice meant, it means to wait, to wait. It means God is, it, not God, it means to wait, to wait on an opportunity, to chill out. She was chilling. She was on ice. She was waiting. And we were missing it. And this is what the church is doing. Tuesday first, first to the prophets, because I'll reveal it to you first. And then to the church. And so first I had to eat, I had to eat that roll myself because I was guilty. 
I was guilty of not doing what God has told me to do in the right place, but not doing what God had told me to do in the right place, doing a God thing. But while you're doing that God thing, I need you to do this thing too and then get back to that thing because it ain't about you. It ain't about you. It's about the people who are on ice in the church, who are dying in the church, who's singing and praising and waving their flags or at the altar every week or crying out. And the ones who have silent cries and you ain't doing nothing with that. Minister, elder, prophet, intercessor, pastor, bishop, apostle, teacher, preacher, all of us, because all of us was represented in that dream. So what in the world is going on? The church is too busy doing God stuff and not kingdom stuff. This mess that's going on in government, get busy with the kingdom. There is no way that the people we have elected to office should be about separating mothers and fathers and children from each other. That is not God. That is not God. While you got sessions quoting scripture, you are to obey government. No. What about the scripture that says, do not cause this little one to stumble, lest you are to have a milestone tied around your neck and cast into the sea? What about the scripture that says, suffer the little ones not to come? What about the scripture that says, little ones have ministering angels assigned to them? What about those scriptures? Sessions, Pence, right here in Indiana, all you supposed Christians and evangelicals? What in the world is going on? The church. We need to speak up. Not just Don Lemon and whatever his name is, 360, and Joy on MSNBC and, and, and Joe and Mika on MSNBC. Not just them. We need to be speaking up about what is going on. This is some Holocaust slavery mess that's going on in Washington, D.C. And they can blame it on policy. It's not a policy, it's not a law, it's a practice. It's something they have chosen to do to the least of these. These are not people who are just coming from Mexico to run over here and, and get freedoms. These are some of these are people who are running for their lives. They are looking for asylum. And you are putting them in jail instead of putting doing what has been done, putting them off somewhere, trying to decide, is there a reason for escaping their country legitimate? And if it is, then we give them asylum. We don't put them in jail. What is this mess about them telling the kids, you're going to, we're going to take you from your mom or your dad so you can go take a shower? Isn't that what they told the kids in the Holocaust? Didn't they take us from our mothers and our fathers in slavery and sell us over here while they so put the parents over there? Y'all better wake up, church. You need, we need to be writing our governors. We need to be screaming from the rooftops. Those who really are Christians and understand that in the church, in the kingdom, in the Bible, there were places called cities of refuge where people could run and find safety. Wake up. Contact your congressman. I don't know how you can be a parent, an aunt, a grandmother, anything, a father, an uncle, a grandfather, and watch what's going on and somehow think the, the ends justifies the means, this is not the way to do this. I'm charging you. Don't be what God showed me in that dream where right before us there are people dying. There are people waiting for us to do something and you just go about doing what you're doing. You're going about doing your business. You're going about uh, uh, self-fulfilling your prophecies. 
building your kingdom. I want to charge us today. Wake up and hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to us, the church. We have a responsibility. Tag someone. Share this. Let this thing go viral. Because ultimately, the, the message is about the woman who was in the room, who was in the house, who was in the church, who was in the kingdom, on ice, waiting for somebody to speak to her situation, waiting for somebody to pray for her. And that is all the way from teacher, pastor, evangelist, prophet, apostle, elder, bishop, all of us, intercessor, worship leader, worshiper, member, Christian, believer, everybody who is called upon the name of the Lord. We have a responsibility in this hour and I'm charging you. What in the world is going on? We sleep. We're letting the Trumps and the Sessions and the Pences and all of these people take our country, this land that says even on our money, in God we trust. And we're letting them throw it back to a place that does not look like God and Jesus. How does the word say, suffer them not to come, but... You stopping them from coming. The devil is a lie. Now see, people don't want to deal when, 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 when the real intercession and prophecy go forth. See, this is how I pray. Deal with them. Cause those who are that drawing and digging pits for others, cause them to fall into the pits that they're dig dig digging. When, when Psalms 52 talks about the wicked man who boasts in all that he has, God is real. God is real. When you get a chance, I want you to read it. My, my Bible didn't closed up here. I'm at the, at the library, and yes, I went and found a Bible so I could read this into your hearing. I taught this before, and, and so we're going we're gonna to just read it now. I taught it before, and it says, you call yourself a hero? You call yourself a mighty man, but yet you boast in evil and doing evil? Mm-hmm. It says, why do you boast in crimes against me? Misusing my word and misquoting my word. That's called divination, beloved. And it's of the devil. I don't care who's quoting it. Pence, the president, session, any of them. If they are quoting scripture, it's called spiritual abuse. If they are quoting scripture and misusing scripture to manipulate people, to get people to do what they think should be done, to get people to buy into their sin, it's divination. It's wickedness. It's not of God. He says, all day long, you plot destruction. You think of plans to bring other people down and to bring people into captivity. Mm-hmm. Your tongue is like a sharp razor. You think you can say whatever you want. He did say he could go into Central Park and shoot somebody and nobody will do anything. And is that not what he's doing? He's constantly pushing the envelope, saying this and doing that. And what are we doing? We letting the Paula Whites and the John Hagees and, and the Lance and Wall News and all of these people say what is the standard of God when you have the word for yourself to tell you what the standard of God is? We better wake up. We better wake up and then we better stay woke. Yes, vote in November. Yes, vote in November. And unless you want this country to go back to these types of things, to Holocaust attitudes and mindsets, which I don't understand that. He does have a Jewish son-in-law. Did, did he forget? Maybe that's why he and his, his son-in-law and his daughter are quiet, because they see what's going on. Beloved, I want you to hear me now. The Bible it says he loves saying things that harm others. You love to lie. That's the word. That's the word, Psalms 52. It says, you who call yourself a mighty man, you love to lie. You love to lie. You love saying evil things about other people, harmful things. But God is going to strike you down. 
once and for all, God is going to raise his sword against you. And he's going to pull you from your homes with your ivory pillars and your marble floors. He said, why? Because you never put your trust in God. You've never declared God as Savior and Lord. You have never said, Lord, forgive me for I have sinned. God's going to come after you. God's going to come after you. He said, you treat little ones. Yes, and we know little ones were those who were immature in the faith, but it was also children. He said, you should have a milestone tied around your neck and cast into the sea. That's what the word says. He told him right here, you're going to be brought down. He said, those of you who think you are mighty warriors, but you don't, you think you ruling something because you sitting up top. You think you doing something because you in that position. He said, no, 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 let me help you. He said, but those of you who have called upon the name of your Lord. Those of you who have called, he said, you, everyone under the sound of my voice who is a believer in Jesus Christ, everyone who will watch this video, he said, you are like a tree. You are an olive tree. You have an anointing and you will thrive in the house of God because you trust God and you seek to do what is right in God. He said, you're going to thrive like an olive tree. And you will praise God forever after you're going to see what God is going to do to these mighty men who say whatever they want to say and do whatever they want to do. The scripture says just because it's lawful doesn't mean it's, it's, it's beneficial. Just because you can don't mean you should. Just because you have these policies and you can manipulate them to do what you want to do and add stuff to them and mistreat people. He said, oh, yeah, you're going to be brought down. From your ivory towers, you're going to be brought down from your high places. He said, your tongue is like a sharp razor. You just say whatever you want to say. Your decisions are hurtful and harmful. But God, but God, Christians, believers, tag somebody, share this with somebody, invite somebody. We must wake up. And speak up and stay awake and keep speaking. Pray. And after you pray, get up off your knees and do something. Vote, yes, in November. But contact, contact your congressman. Please contact your congressman. And say this mess about separating children from their parents and putting these parents in jail, particularly when they are trying to escape from a violent country where there is harm against them. They are looking for asylum. We need to speak out. And even if you're in a church like in, I think it's Dallas, Eddie Long, Eddie, Eddie Young, Ed Young, and these big mega churches with Latinos and black folk and women in their church, but they are siding with this man in Washington. Why are they siding with him? Because of abor abortion rights, homosexual marriage, putting the judges they want in, in the seats. And um, 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 uh, Christian liberties, or however it says, or religious rights. Let me tell you something. I ain't scared to say nothing to homosexuals. They don't trip on me saying that God don't agree with your lifestyle, but I love you. I, I can't support your lifestyle. I don't believe in your lifestyle. The thing I believe in is Jesus. They don't get mad at me. So why, why do I need you to start talking about my religious rights? I understand how they sue the cake owner and all of these different things. Okay, fine. Put the laws in place, but you don't need a wicked man to do that. Okay, abortion. I don't believe in abortion. But I do believe in a woman's right to choose. Does that surprise somebody? As an elder, as a prophet, as a minister? I believe in her right to choose. And that's between her God and if she married her husband. That ain't none of my business. But I've, I've counseled and ministered uh, to enough women who made that choice and what they've had to go through. So from that perspective, I come to them and say, baby, I don't know if that's what you want to do because down the road, the regret. But not because I think the law, I got to put the, these people in office to create the law. The law is already there. Okay, you don't believe in same-sex marriage? Neither do I. I believe in Jesus. Do I support same-sex marriage? No, I don't, because I believe God made woman for man and man for woman. But if that's what you're doing, that ain't got nothing to do with me. God 
God's going to deal with them. If you come to me and ask me, I'll tell you the truth and I'm going to love on you. The ends are not justifying the means. What they are trying to get to does not justify the things and the laws that they are creating and the way they are treating people. Church, wake up. Hear me. God is going to hold us accountable. What God showed me yesterday about that man sitting in that room outside where I was in the other room. There's a brother at our church who works at a, um, where is that? The place where they have funerals. He works there. And God showed me a funeral home. <laughs> God showed me. That's what it was. It's that man who checks people in when, when family comes in. And, and he's sitting in this place and in this space to be able to speak life to dead situations. And that's many of you. You're sitting right smack dab in dead situations. We're sitting in a situation that looks like it's dying. But God is going to require you to speak to dead bones. He's going to require you to speak to dead situations. And it requires a prayed up and fasted life. It requires you to get in this Bible. It requires you to get in this word and know the word so when people start quoting scriptures, you can say, wait, 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 wait. You don't get to take one scripture and build policy on it. You don't get to take one scripture and, and mistreat people based on one scripture. Woe to them. Woe. God has a woe. Woe to them. They better stop it because God's going to come after them. I know what I'm hearing and I know what I saw. I know what I saw. Don't be surprised. Hear me. I ain't wishing nothing on nobody, but I'm speaking in my vein. Don't be surprised if folks start having heart attacks and strokes. Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. All those who are mistreated, because God is slow. He's slow to anger. He's slow to anger. Mm -hmm. He's slow to anger. He gives us time to come to the knowledge and the truth of who he is and, and knowledge and truth of what we're doing. He's slow to anger, but don't be surprised. Don't be surprised because I'm praying for a quick work. I'm praying for a quick turnaround. I'm praying for God to deal with them quickly and swiftly and rightly and justly for mistreating them babies and their mothers. Weak, w the weak people. They're weak. They come in with clothes on their back, no money on their bank, may not, money in their pocket, may not even know English. And you pulling these babies off and sending them to build. And then when they put them on TV, they're going to show us the 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 holding places that are all clean and they got mattresses and they all made up and everything all lined up. No, the devil is a lie. Because what you need to understand is these facilities where a lot of these people are being held, they're sleeping on floors. They're sleeping on cots. It's cold in there. They got blankets that they give the people in prison, which y'all know don't keep them warm. But they're going to show you the pretty so that you can think they're living good. Until when? Then they done lost kids. Hear me, y'all. They done lost kids. They don't know where children are. So how are those children being treated? Have some of them been sold into trafficking? Y'all better hear me. We can't let this happen, church. We can't let this happen. Contact your congressman. And y'all, please do it. Those pictures are staged. Contact your congressman. If you don't hear nothing I've said, contact your congressman. Yeah, they're holding facilities like concentration camps. Y'all better hear me. Don't don't get it to it. So did we think it was pretty and nice underneath those ship, ships coming back through the channel? Coming from Africa through the channel? No. It ain't never pretty. When somebody snatches, pulls a child from their parent. And in this case, for no reason. Church, you better, we better wake up. And we better speak up. Contact your Congress people. And tell them, I'm telling you, I don't, I'm not trying to go viral to be famous. God said he'll make my name great. I'm not trying to go viral to be famous. 
but we need to get the word out for people to contact their Congress and put a stop to this. I say this all the time. Please, please put me on uh, uh, with one of these crazy people talking about quoting scripture when they start doing that. I, honey, I'll come up against Paula. I don't profess to know Genesis to Revelation, but I know a little bit. And you will not use God's word to manipulate people to get them to do what you want them to do. You will not misuse God's word to control people, to deceive people so that they will think, oh, this is of God. Trump was never of God. Let me help you with something. I'm going to get up off of here. When they were talking about Trump was like unto number 45, uh, number 45, Isaiah 45, King Cyrus. Well, King Cyrus was not a believer in God, but he was a good king. He was a good king because he provided for those he brought into captivity. He was a good king because he gave them land to continue to prosper and continue to grow. He let them worship their God. That ain't what's going on up there. The only thing number 45 has in common with Cyrus is that he does not believe in God and he's putting people, he's putting people into captivity. Just like when Cyrus would, would conquer a, con a country, a nation, they would be his captors, but he would at least let them prosper where they were. The only thing number 45 has in common with Isaiah 45, King Cyrus, is that he does not believe in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Out of his own mouth, he said, I don't care what Paula White tell you. And nor, and he has now brought people into captivity. Hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to you, the church. Tag, share, send it to CNN, MSNBC. You can send it to Fox News. I don't care where you send it. But church, we better wake up. If you have called upon the name of the Lord as your Savior, we have a responsibility to speak to dead things, to speak to things that are out of order, to speak to things that are waiting, waiting for life to be spoken so that they can breathe again. I thank you and I bless you for receiving me and hearing this word. God bless you and I pray that you have a great Saturday.